Welcome to the She Wins Podcast. I'm your host, Heather Sumlin, and today I'm with my neighbor and good friend, <laughs> Stephanie Milas. Stephanie has a photography business which is so incredibly successful. She does amazing things. And I just thought it would be really cool to bring on a woman who is succeeding in business and just kind of pick her brain a little bit and hear about her journey to the U.S. and how did she start her business. Okay. Welcome, my neighbor. Yay! To the <laughs> She Wins Podcast. Okay, so tell everybody just a little bit about you. I'll let you do your own little intro. Yes, ma'am. So thank you for having me. Um, my name is Stephanie. I um, am a photographer, maternity and newborn photographer. I specialize in photographing moms and babies, and I've been doing this for about, um, well, actually since I was 18, so a while, mm-hmm. uh, a little over 12 years now. So um, I grew up in Romania in Eastern Europe, this tiny little country that nobody has ever heard of, <laughs> and I um, uh, I started photography right when I was pretty much fresh out of high school. Mm-hmm. I discovered that I had a, well, I always knew I had, I wanted to do something with art. I just didn't really know what, because somehow in my culture, you know, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that, they kind of think you're a little stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I always had a passion for art. I didn't really think I was going to pursue anything in that um, department. Um, I came to the U.S. as a foreign exchange student in, the, in my senior year in high school, and I just took some random painting and drawing classes, and I ended up just winning all the art competitions that I entered, Oh, girl. which was great, because wow. with the money that I won, I bought my first camera. So that's kind of pretty much how my beginning was. That um, is so cool. And um, I don't know these stories, even yeah, though you're my neighbor. Like, I don't know. Th- I'm so excited. Okay, keep going. Um... I didn't really want to be a photographer. I just really did have a passion for photography, and I was taking my camera out just pretty much everywhere and photographing everything. Um, this was back then when Facebook was really a thing, and everybody that was buying a fancy camera had <laughs> photography next to their name, and I was like, no, I will not be one of those. <laughs> um, so after my year in high school here, I went back home um, to finish college. I studied uh, graphic design for... Mm-hmm. Um, I majored in graphic design, and... I just started to do photography on the side, just mainly for myself. Um, I had a really good friend that was working for the local newspaper, and um, I just kind of asked him, hey, I'm going to come help you, be your assistant, if you can just kind of show me how this camera works, and just I'll do whatever you need me to do, just, you know, help me out. Teach me. Teach me, yes. So um, I hung out with him a lot, and uh, he showed me around. We started to do a lot of really cool creative shoots, as in... uh, you know, photograph like somebody's uh, gown collection or mm-hmm. t- designer's uh, collection, or we would do um, some crazy, we would do some crazy photo shoots like um, Cinderella, Black Swan, just theme sessions, which were really, really fun. Um, and I was just, be- I was just there just helping and, you know, fixing the dress and throwing the dress <laughs> or just not really photographing much, but um, just looking at his work. Um, it just kind of inspired me and I, in my mind, I was like, I think I can do this too. And Mm. I think I have some other ideas that how I can make this really, really pretty. So, um, I went to college in another town, um, about three hours away and I started just doing a lot of these creative shoots on my own. I was just call my friends over and we'd do hair makeup. I had a lot of friends that were makeup artists or hairstylists and I had, I would find some crazy dresses and would make wigs and all of that. So we just put all these creative shoots together, would go in all these parks and all these awesome locations around there. And, um, I just started posting all these uh, sessions on Facebook just for me because I love mm-hmm. doing it and absolutely no no uh, goal whatsoever of pursuing this as a career. And um, I just started getting a bunch of people asking me, well, how much do you charge for a session? And then I was like, oh. Oh, I better charge well, now. I, I can like, charge. I kind of <laughs> need some money. So, <laughs> um, so then I just uh, started photographing pretty much everything and everyone. I mean, um, I started doing a lot of senior photo shoots. That was something that um, is very popular in my country. And, um, of course, I got into weddings because everybody thinks that's where the money is whenever mm-hmm. you start out. And I think that most of photographers um, – will at some point end up photographing some weddings until they figure out what they are actually really good at and what they love to do. Um, So I started photographing a lot of weddings, just senior sessions, family session, anything that I could even think of. And um, three years later, once I finished college, I actually moved here to the States. Mm -hmm. 
uh, right before I actually went home um, from my experience from as a senior senior in high school here, I met my husband now. Um, we ended up doing long, long distance for three years. And that's some serious long distance from the United yeah, States to Romania. That's like 12 hours on a flight. <laughs> that's, a, that's a commitment. That's a commitment. That's a whole other thing. We could, we could talk about yes. secrets to long distance. I don't recommend. It's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. It's not for everybody. Um, so we did long distance for three years. After I finished college, um, we got married. I moved over here. We did the wedding here, actually. And uh, I basically had to start all my career, to put it like that, all over. Um, because I moved into a country where I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends. I didn't. Um, it was kind of intimidating at first. It's just like, nobody knows you. You don't know anybody. Well, how do you make it work? And sure, I knew the language because I learned English ever since mm -hmm. I was in kindergarten. But it's still kind of in your subconscious that, hey, it's not my first language. I don't really know how things are getting done here and all of that. So I think that was a great, well, that was the biggest challenge, pretty much, of... Um, and were you oh. all in Texas yeah. the whole time? Yeah, we we're here okay. in Dallas. So it's a little different accent than what we, you're used to. Yes, I'm I'm getting there, y'all, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I started everything pretty much from scratch in a place where I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends. It was a hard journey. It took mm -hmm. a lot of work, but I made it work. And 10 years later, I'm here, and I'm still doing what I love, and... Mm -hmm. I would not even imagine my life in any other way. So tell me, what is a maybe a defining moment in your life? Was it moving here to the United States, or is there something else that? I think um, a defining uh, America was not necessarily a culture shock for me because mm -hmm. I have a lot of family. Um, in California, mm -hmm. so I kind of pretty much grew up visiting ever since I was a kid. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't go through that culture shock that most of the people do whenever mm -hmm. they come here. However, I think the biggest challenge for me was really just figuring out how to make this work and starting a business from scratch where um, I didn't really have any um, help in any way. So I had to figure it out. Um, when we got married, so my husband, he's five years older. Basically, he was kind of fresh out of college and that was he was probably on his second job then he was kind of making minimum wage you know we were trying to figure life out I wasn't working because I was still waiting for my paperwork when I moved here so mm -hmm. for a whole year I couldn't do really do much of anything and uh, I think that was the biggest struggle because mm -hmm. we were actually not just living paycheck to paycheck, but we were we were um, living with the money that we were saving from our wedding we were we had saved from our wedding so um, I remember when we, even when we started, like, we didn't really have a couch, we didn't have a dining table, we were eating on, like, our, um, just a box of plates that we got at a wedding, so, uh, I knew I desperately needed to make something work and mm -hmm. to figure it out, and I actually applied to, um, I applied to Domino's, I applied to, um, a bunch of pizza places, I applied to, um, even an apartment complex to, um, be a leasing agent, and I just got turned down and down and down. Um, oh, wow. In every, like, at every single thing that I applied, and I was like, I don't understand it. Like, I know I can do this. I'm great. I mean, it's a pizza place. Like, <laughs> what do you need? I can make a pizza. <laughs> uh, so um, I think that was just God's way of closing the wrong door so that he can still direct me to go um, into what I really was meant to do and continue what I really love to do. Um Everything changed for me really one day. My husband doesn't like me sharing the story, but mm -hmm. everything changed for me the one day when we went to the bank, he and I, to open a credit card. And uh, uh, we were just sitting there across the table with a banker, and he was just asking me, so what do you do? And I was like, well, I'm a photographer. And then my husband, with no bad intentions, he just mm -hmm. came out wrong. He turns towards me, and he's like, well, you're not really a photographer because you don't have any clients. And I was like... Oh, wow. <laughs> this is one of those things that we're going to talk later in the car. <laughs> um, but I think that was the moment when I was like, okay, I can continue. It was like motivation, this. though. It, it really was. And that was, I think, really what it was. Um, I can continue like this. This is what I want to do. This is what I love doing. I'm getting turned down in all these other jobs that I'm applying for. So 
um, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to figure it out. So that was pretty much, I think, the defining moment where everything changed for me. Was when he um, said, you're not really a photographer because you don't have any clients. Yes. Um, and I was like, I'm going to make this work now. <laughs> now I'm determined. I love that. So I mean, it, and that really no shade on him. Like, that's just... He wasn't wrong. Yes. He didn't have he, any clients. Just true. And he did it. It just came out wrong. He right. didn't mean it in a wrong yeah. way. Because honestly, he's been the most supporting husband. And I appreciate him so much because, mm-hmm. you know, especially when you moved here and you don't really have or know anybody and you want to start something that a lot of people consider that, you know, well, what is photography? It's just a lot of people mm-hmm. think it's just a hobby or you're just pressing a button. You're not really doing much or you right. can't really have a career doing that. And He was very supportive from the beginning and he encouraged me. He waited for me to, you know, just, he he actually was working every single day until 5-ish p.m. And I would schedule my sessions around like 6 p.m., like close to sunset. And he would drive all the way from Dallas, sometimes to Fort Worth or just wherever my photo shoots were to just come and help. Even if he wasn't necessarily helping, he was just there with me just to be supportive and, you know, be there with me and for me, which I appreciated so much. So he was a great motivation. He helped me a lot in all this journey. So how did you manage to get clients when you didn't know anyone? Yes. So um, what I did is I created an Instagram account. I think that's back then is when Instagram was starting to be a thing. And Mm -hmm. um, I posted my photos. um, And I just, I remember the lady that did the hair makeup for my wedding. She was like, girl, you're so good. You should do an Instagram account and just you know, people would love this because your photography is so different. I was like, okay. So I created my Instagram account, actually went to her uh, her Instagram profile, went to her followers and started following everybody. And then <laughs> I, that was the only thing that I figured out and I knew, or that was the only thing that I thought to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just started getting a bunch of people that would follow me back. And I think people loved my work because it was a different style than what they were used mm-hmm. to here especially, you know, Texas and um, indoor sessions were not really a thing back then. So everybody was just kind of photographing outside. And what I had in my portfolio from home was such a different thing than what everybody was doing here. And I, I'm not really a country girl. So it wasn't anything super, <laughs> you know, country cowboy boots and all of that yeah. that you see everywhere. So so I think that definitely helped. And uh, I started getting a lot of people that followed me back. Um, I did just random competitions. I would be like, okay, just, you know, like this page mm-hmm. or tag your friends or I, something along these lines. And I'm going to pick like two or three different people to, um, as winners and I'm going to do your session for free. So I started doing mm-hmm. that. I really offered a lot of sessions for free to just to kind of get my name out there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's actually funny. Just one of the couple that I photographed for free just happened to be somebody that was relatively known in their community. So, once they posted your images, which were beautiful back then, I started mm-hmm. getting a lot, a lot of um, followers and a lot of people that started to inquire from there. So this is kind of how slowly my business started picking up. And then, you know, just going through all the changes that you go through. I photographed families. I photographed weddings because I did weddings whenever I came here as well. Um, I photographed uh, anything you can really think of. And I knew from back home, though, that weddings – it's not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I was just doing it because I needed the money. Right. Um, but it's not something I loved. I feel like weddings are more, kind of more into a photojournalistic style, mm-hmm. as in you're there to just photograph whatever's happening and however they planned your day. You can be creative, of course, but mainly, you know, you're just there and you work with what you have. Right. Um, and I think that I kind of fell in love with photography because... I love to do the sets and the makeup and the gowns and the hair and the crazy things that nobody was doing. And, and the underwater shoots yes, in your pool in yes, the backyard. Yes, all of so that. Cool. Um, so I, um, yeah, I decided, okay, well, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to be great at it, I'm going to focus on what I really love. So, and I really believe that. I think that if you do want to be great at something, just focus on what you love and continue with that. I'm writing that down. Yes. If you want to be great at something. <laughs> um, so I decided then, okay, weddings is not my thing. I'm not going to do this. I am um, going to focus on what I really love, and I'm going to make this work. So um, I uh, started doing maternity photography. Um, back then, outfits and gowns and all of that fun stuff that we see now was not really a thing. Mm-hmm. So I remember I had a client, well, one of my first maternity, she came over to a, her session with a, it was kind of like a twist on one of those gowns that was coming up right now or, or back then. And they were super expensive. They were like $200 a 
dress. It was kind of like mm-hmm. opening the front so you can see the belly. And mm-hmm. then it had a little bit of, of a train. And her grandma made it for her. And it was this like hot pink uh, dress. It wasn't anything like amazing. But back then I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. <laughs> um, so it just kind of brought back memories to me of how I used to make my own outfits for the sessions and just kind of be so creative. So I think that's what kind of sparked a little bit of, okay, I'm going to do something different for my clients and for my maternity clients. So I started Mm -hmm. looking everywhere to buy different outfits, buy different Mm -hmm. dresses and offer a wardrobe, which is what nobody was doing back then. Um, So I would go, this was like, we were still kind of like just trying to make it work. We were Mm -hmm. still pretty much struggling back then. I would go on like Facebook marketplace, like whatever offer up, whatever eBay, eBay was a great thing back then. So I would just buy all these dresses at the cheapest price that I could find. Then then I started to even rent them out. Um, I'll be like, okay, well, if I can make more money out of this, I'm definitely going to do that. So um, this is another thing that helped me kind of differentiate myself and stand out in a market that was, is, and is oversaturated with photographers. Um, So I started to do that. Also, newborns. Well, back then, my mentality was, okay, well, if I'm going to get my client as a maternity client, she's going to have her baby, I might as well get her for the newborn session as well. And then I'm, you know, basically doing two sessions for the same client, which is great because it's going to bring me more money. Mm -hmm. Um, So I remember actually... you also get to see the baby. I get to see the baby. You get to see that joyful, yeah. No, that's kind of fun too. Um, I remember one of my sweet clients from back then when I started out, she, I did her maternity session and she loved my work and she was like, please can you just photograph my baby? And back then I was like, I am not doing baby sessions. Babies are hard and they are mm-hmm. very hard. Um, but we really needed the money. So I was <laughs> like, okay, I mean, $200, I'll figure it out. It can't be that hard to hold a baby. I never even held a baby. That was the week old oh. ever in my arms. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I mean, I'll do it. Well, can, it can't be that hard. So I remember I bought a beanbag. We were still in an apartment, and I, I did this in my apartment. I had one bedroom, one bath, and we didn't even have nice stands back then. Mm-hmm. Um, so I bought a beanbag. I borrowed some lights that I had no idea how to use. I was like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> um, oh, and wait, I bought that's another one. It can't be that hard. It can't be that hard. I bought <laughs> um, just like some random crochet outfit that everybody was using back then for the baby. And uh, I was like, okay, well, let's see how this is going to work. And I remember that session took six hours. It was the longest session. I hated everything about myself because I said, yes, why would I do that? (laughs) That baby would just not sleep, would not settle. I had no idea what I was doing, but she was so sweet. And we did some great images in the end, and Mm -hmm. she did end up absolutely loving them. Um, Funny thing, though, she had one more baby since, and she came back like, maybe like two years ago um, for her other, uh, for her maternity and her newborn session again. And it was just so sweet to see all these clients from back then and follow me Mm -hmm. through my whole journey. Um, But anyway, so I bought all these props in for the newborn sessions, uh, which was not that many props, but Mm -hmm. you know, it was like a hundred dollars that I spent that was a hundred dollars that we really needed back then. So I'm like, okay, well now I am have to make it work because I bought all of this and I will make it work. So um, I did make it work. <laughs> I started learning. I just took all the courses that you can take, went to all the workshops that you can go, and I figured it out. And I didn't love babies then, but I sure do love these baby sessions now. <laughs> and <laughs> My sessions don't take six hours anymore, but they are so cute. And I absolutely love working with these babies. Well, and Ashley's had a chance to help you on occasion and do a little social media stuff for you and what she'll say she's like she's so good mom she's got the coolest setup like because because Ashley's wanting to pursue photography and she has been pursuing photography and you're part of the reason like she just loves seeing where it can go yeah what the possibilities are okay so speaking of just kind of success in general how would you define winning like what would what would a win be to Stephanie I think success for me, and I was actually thinking long and hard about this, and not just now. Mm -hmm. This is a question that I've been thinking for a while. Um, I think success for me is just living your life to your fullest potential. Mm -hmm. Um, I think especially now in the social media era that we live in, even looking on Instagram every day, I see, uh, you know, just people that you follow, Hollywood, influencers, whatever they are. And I'm not just going to say influencers because I have a lot of influencer influencer clients that are great uh, and they're amazing. But I think that what's being promoted a lot is just, you know, living that luxury life and having everything and being able to travel and, uh, you know, have the stuff and 
go places and go to restaurants. Mm-hmm. And I think that we see a lot of success being associated with just having stuff and having mm-hmm. money. And I mean, sure, it's great to have a life that, you know, you can comfortably live and you don't have to worry about things and money is great. But I think that life is so much more than that. And I think the more you end up doing life, you realize that um, success can be so many different things and it can be defined in so many different ways in so many areas like what is success in your family what is success in your um, relationships or in your job and um, I think in my opinion what my definition of success is kind of sums it all just live everything that you have to your fullest potential I think that's when you really fulfill your purpose that you've been put on this earth for so what what do you think is next for you? I mean, I didn't even plan to ask you that, so I don't know. What's what's next? You've done so many things with photography, and I know you're doing a lot of coaching now too, aren't you? Um, so I focus a lot on business mentoring. I love to help photographers just bring their work to the next level and realize that this is something they can actually make a career of and have a great, comfortable living. Um, so we do that. We started doing underwater photography just last year. So that's something new that I am offering my clients. It's really awesome. Um, it's something that I actually wanted to do for a while, but I didn't have a pool. And, um, now since her pool was finally done, um, I was able to offer that and it's just something so different. And Mm I, I love, and I tell my students this as well. Um, no matter what you do, find something that makes you stand out because it is an oversaturated market, but you need to find something that you have to offer to your client that's different than everybody else. Because why would they book, even why would they book with you? And this is not just for photography, it's for everything. Why would they come to you if they can get the same thing somewhere else? So Especially if they can get it somewhere else cheaper. Yes, so I try to, um, I try to offer different things and um, just provide a different kind of service. So, mm-hmm. you know, they can have a great experience and a different experience that they can get anywhere else. Um, so I think that's pretty much what's new. If that was mm-hmm. that, yeah. derailed. Was that the question? Yes, that was the question. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I asked you a different question than, than what I told you I was going to ask. You. Yes. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on right now, which is awesome. Last year, we started all these workshops. Um, I put it together with one of my great friends. I did the business part. She did the um, mm-hmm. photography mentoring part. We went to... We just started, honestly, we put it out there and we were like, okay, we're going to start in Chicago and just see what the demand is and how it goes and what people are saying. So uh, we sold out in like the two days when we when we um, opened registration and then we were like, okay, well, let's do another one in Chicago. So we sold out of that one too. And then we went to LA and we did two in LA and then we did another one in New Jersey. So um, people want to learn, which is awesome. Um, so that's something that we're doing now. Um and it's a great part of this journey. I love that. I realized how much I love to actually help other people um, and just make sure that they they end up um, not making the same mistakes that I did, but, you know, learn from my mistakes and get actually get a great um, strategic plan so that they can really have great careers moving forward. So what was, like, maybe something that you have been told or advice that you've been given that has made the biggest impact on you, whether it's your success in your personal or professional life? I think that um, one of the things that I, and this is one of the things that I tell my students as well, uh, and I don't know if anybody told me this or I read it somewhere, but this is really my motto um, in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only limits that you have are the limits that you believe. And um, I think that a lot of people are not successful just because um, they don't think they can be. Um, It's such... If they believe, if they would believe a little bit in their in themselves, they would end up um, just on a whole different level. So, I think that you can be successful. I think that everybody has all the right tools to get there, and they can get all the right tools to get there. But it's just, do they really want it? And if they really want it, are they really willing to make all the sacrifices to get there? And do they believe that they can reach exactly whatever those goals are, or those dreams? Do they believe it's possible? I think that what's interesting about your story is that here you come to a whole new country. You have one supporter. Yes, for real. <laughs> you have zero just one. Clients. And my parents from home, that you know, which is great, but <laughs> no one in the state of Texas had any idea why they should hire you and you had that one motivating moment where you're like, No, I'm gonna have to do it now. Yeah. I have no choice. I'm going to, but you believed you could. I did. And you did because you have an extremely successful business. What are what do you think are the main keys to your success when you really think about it? 
what has led you to to get where you are? I think it all starts from your mind, and I think it's a mindset, Mm -hmm. most of all. Um, Honestly, I was very fortunate to grow up in a family where ever since I was a little kid, they would always push me to be great and do good and be the best at what I do. And this is another thing that I tell everybody all the time, whatever you do, just be the best at it. No matter that it's your job or it's like you're Mm -hmm. cleaning the house or whatever it is that you do, just, I believe in that so much. And so that was something that was instilled in me ever since I was a little child and just really to have your priorities in order. Um, I really wanted to make this work and I'm a very competitive person. (laughs) It's a great thing, but man, it's a bad thing sometimes. but ever since I was a little kid, there was no was not really an option for me. And mm-hmm. I grew up like that. And I remember my mom always telling me ever since I was a little kid, you can do this. And whenever I would say, no, I can't do this or I'm not going to do this or I want to quit. It was like, no, you can do this. You're my girl. You can do anything right. that you want. You can if you put your mind to it, you're going to get it done. So I just feel like growing up with that. Um, it was a blessing because I grew up with that mentality. So for me, no was never really an option. And if I, if back then in that decided, deciding moment, if I said, okay, I'm going to make this work, then I was going to make it work because I said I was going to make it work. So were your parents okay with you moving to the U.S.? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have one more sister that lives in California, and she moved to the U.S. when I was, I think, sixth or seventh grade. So, and we grew up with as a very, very close family. Um and you know it's like they lost already a child Mm. my sister is like 15 years older than me so she's kind of like my mommy growing up we grew up so so close together so it was very hard when she moved but they obviously did not want to lose me too and i um it's not like i really planned to be here necessarily but um life happened and i told my mom more than i mean you know dads are dads but Mm -hmm. moms you know moms are more emotional and they're Mm -hmm. like oh now i have no kids and no babies left (laughs) uh so you know this is what god had in store for me and where i need to be and i know it's where i needed to be and i think that that was a blessing and i can see his hand at work in my life and i think that's just the best plan out of, out of them all. So you read with winning in mind. I did. And you recommend it to some of your photographers. I did. Actually, they recommended it at my workshops. I think it's a great book. Why do you, okay, why do you think it's important for photographers? I think it's important for anybody that wants to do something and they're lacking that they're um, not necessarily the courage, but they doubt themselves. Mm-hmm. And I see this a lot, especially in the photography industry. They want to charge the higher prices or they want to offer this and that, but they're scared of rejection. Thank God I never had an issue with that. I mm-hmm. think just, again, because I was so fortunate to grow up with all these little things that my mom and mom and dad instilled in me when I was a kid, but I see this a lot. Um, and this was one of the things that I talked about at the workshops as well. It's like, okay, well, if you do want to end up to this level and you do want to serve let's say the luxury clientele, or you do want to charge these prices that are absolutely crazy because there's so many other photographers that are so cheap around you. How are you going to stand down? How are you going to make it make it work? And how are you going to get over your mind that's going to tell you, no, I can't do it, or no, I'm so scared, or what if nobody's going to pay, or what if nobody's going to do it? So um, I did have quite a few different points that I brought up um, to everybody from that book, which was awesome. I think it definitely helped. So thanks, Dad. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, Stephanie, thank you so much for driving all the way over five minutes. Yes, thank you for having me. (laughs) You're welcome. I'm so excited for your future success. Thank you. I'm just glad that I'm like along for the ride a little bit. And even through my daughter's eyes, just watching (laughs) how excited she gets when she comes home from one of your shoots, I think we we have a future little minty for you yes. so well thank you all so much for watching you need to follow stephanie so tell us how we can follow your journey where yes. can they find you on instagram so they can find me on instagram on facebook on my website um my we'll probably post it right mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. my my instagram well my name is stephanie Ficut photography i know mm-hmm. it's kind of complicated everybody <laughs> remembers me as a girl that they can't pronounce her, her last name <laughs> but i did start photography when i was back in romania before i got married and whenever i moved here i th- i feel like that was one piece that i did not did not want to change just mm-hmm. so i decided okay i'm gonna keep my last name the way it is and just whatever it is it is if people can't say it, that's fine <laughs> but it's how do you spell it uh it's f-i-c-u-t so you're pretty easy you're pretty easy to find yeah yeah, and we'll post it. We'll post, we'll post it in it the 
in the description too. Yes. So like this episode if you do, share it with a friend. If you know a photographer who needs to up their game, mm-hmm. Stephanie is your girl. If you have not joined my Patreon membership, please join because Stephanie and I are going to spend a little bit of time giving you a little bit of more nuts and bolts on how to rank success for women.